I'm Dalibor. I work for Red Hat as a QE in the team where the USB guard is developed. I want to uh, introduce the uh, software, the main uh, main concept, and I would like to lead you through the process of configuring the USB guard. So you are encouraged to open your laptops and try as we go after a few slides. So what the USB guard is? Basically, this is uh, what uh, the home page says. Uh, so it's a, it's a framework which helps you to protect your computer against uh, bad USBs. Uh, and uh, it's implemented via black blacklisting and whitelisting. Um, I will go uh, through these points. First of all, I want to mention some attack uh, access vectors uh, in general. Then I will talk a bit about the concept or, or the design, uh, then the service configuration, command line interface, uh, the rule-based uh, database, and um, uh, a bit of uh, graphical user interface. So the access, uh, attack access vectors, what it is. Actually, uh, the access can be divided into two main uh, aspects. One is remote and one is physical, like the local. Then we have a system and uh, we need to protect the system somehow. So obviously for the remote access we use firewall. It is the first line defense uh, of the system. Then we use uh, discrete uh, uh, discretionary access control on the disk layer, uh, which is obvious uh, for I guess most of you, uh, which uh, defines uh, access to files, so uh, different users cannot uh, access uh, uh, files which uh, are not owned by them or are not allowed to access them. Then we have also SLinux layer, which uh, helps to protect uh, processes uh, or can prevent processes uh, from communication uh, which, uh, within the processes or uh, each other process. Uh, and um, uh, <coughs> these are still online uh, things. Then we have also this USB guard, which uh, tries to pro protect you from these uh, external inputs, uh, which are not wanted. And uh, finally, we have also looks uh, for encryption, uh, the data on the disk. Uh, because uh, all these uh, all these features uh, are working in online state uh, or are protecting you in online. Uh, the, the looks uh, encryption is for offline uh, pr uh, protecting, uh, protection, basically. If you have physical uh, access to the system, then you need to either use or you, you would like to use USB guard for managing the inputs, but uh, in the case the attacker has that physical uh, access, he can also steal your hardware, like, uh, like the, your laptop or, or just the hard drive. Then if you connect it to another machine, you can access the data. So the encryption is a really critical part of uh, the complex security. Uh, so the USB guard is not something which can uh, uh, fulfill the, uh, the security for you. And the uh, last one is the human factor. This is something we, uh, we need to count with and uh, it's hard to protect the system against people, basically. <laughs> so now the basic design. Uh, as you can see, we have a, a Linux kernel, we have some uh, USB device, and then we have a system service, the USB card uh, daemon, uh, which is listening to the, to the events from the uh, kernel and uh, uses the database where are the rules stored and applying these rules uh, to, to particular uh, devices connected to uh, to the USB uh, ports, uh, it 
either uh, blocks or enables the device. Uh, there is also a command line interface and graphical user interface for managing and also online uh, uh, monitoring the, uh, the situation. Uh, on Fedora uh, system, you need to install USB guard and uh, also USB guard applet QT uh, for desktop environment which enables you to, uh, to have uh, uh, applet in, in the system tray, which uh, informs you about, uh, uh, it notifies you about the uh, events uh, happening in uh, USB guard. On the Debian or Ubuntu based uh, distros, uh, the packages are named uh, the same way. You just need to install it with uh, apt command. So if you want to, to try it, please do so. And uh, I will show you how to configure the uh, whole thing. Uh, the first thing uh, for configuration is the service. Uh, it's uh, the it's configuring of uh, the USB guard daemon. It's locating in etc usb guard usb guard uh, uh, There is a default configuration. Uh, the most uh, interesting parts here are uh, in a bold font. Uh, this is the uh, implicit target policy, which is blocked. It means every new unrecognized device is blocked automatically. Then, uh, <coughs> what to do with uh, devices already connected to the system uh, in the time of uh, starting the daemon. So, it applies the policy in this case. Uh, it means it will uh, disable these devices which are not allowed. Um, uh, also, there is a line for a controller uh, for the inserted devices. This is the state or the, the configuration for devices which are inserted while the demon is running. And um, there's a IPC allowed groups. Uh, statement uh, which uh, defines who can manage USB guardian over IPC. There are uh, paths to, to some files, also IPC uh, access control can be uh, specified uh, as a drop-in uh, snippet in, uh, in this directory. Um, that's see basically uh, the configuration does not need to be changed by default uh, or uh, the default configuration is enough for a standard uh, operation and uh, uh, now what about the command line interface there is a command USB guard which takes uh, some subcommands each subcommand and, and obviously the, the command itself uh, has uh, good uh, help there are man manual pages uh, which you can go through. There is uh, hey, uh, one thing I forgot to mention. In this config file, every, every option is, uh, uh, is described uh, in, uh, in the command. So uh, you don't need to switch to man pages and so. Um, so this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, command line tool allows you to, uh, to configure the service, to add uh, rules and so on. And also it, uh, the, the most important command is generate policy. First of all, if you want to start using uh, uh, USB guard daemon, if you start it right away, it will block all the USB devices, which is not what you usually want. So you need to initiate somehow the policy to, to generate the rules. So this command will help you and basically it, uh, what it does is it takes all the, in, all the devices connected uh, at that time and create allowed, allow rules for them. Uh, the rules uh, are, they, they always start with allow or deny. Uh, and keyword, and uh, there are attributes of that uh, of that uh, devices. 
which uh, are standard USB uh, IDs, serial number, name, all this stuff is provided by the device itself. Uh, you can omit the format with the hashes, uh, as you can see here, there is a hash of all the uh, attributes of these uh, uh, devices. And uh, for normal usage uh, on a desktop, it's not that readable, so you can generate it without those hashes. Uh, and, uh, or, or just with the uh, hashes. Using the hashes is good for distribution via network, for example. Because no one can modify the, the rules you predefined, like the company-wide, for example. It's, it's hard to change them. Uh, actually, how to actually create the initial, uh, initial rule set is to use the generate command, uh, uh, put that output to file, and, uh, and set proper permissions to file, so it must be owned by root and only root. And you need to restart the service. And USB guard watch command. This is something to which allows you to monitor what's happening. So let me, uh, let me uh, show you the actual uh, process. So currently I have no USB guard running uh, on the system. And um, yeah, I can generate the policy for Ah, OK, thank you. I can generate the policy for, uh, for currently connected devices. Uh, I can put it to USB guard uh, directory rules conf. Yeah, I have it here. Okay. Uh, I can. I, I need to. Uh, <laughs> I can copy from here. Uh, so let me change the ownership. This should, uh, okay, this should be enough. So uh, in the file there are those rules which I generated, and now I can start the daemon. Um, so system CTL. Uh, I have uh, no running uh, USB card, so I just need to start it. Come on. Okay, and from this time, I'm not able to connect any uh, new device. Uh, I can use that um, USB guard money. It's not. Uh, yeah, not monitor watch. Command, and now I can see if I use my flash disk and connect it. I can see that uh, the device uh, is locked currently. Uh, it has some ID, uh, the serial number, it has uh, some name, the data travel thing. And there is also the hash of these uh, parameters. And I can see also uh, the parent uh, hash, uh, which means basically the controller in this case uh, to which the device is connected. Uh, I can see the exact port number uh, which is uh, connected to and uh, there is an interface which is uh, uh, defined by the, by the device. In this case, uh, it means uh, that this is flash drive. Yeah, this uh, interface ID means uh, flash drive. You can search it on the uh, internet uh, for uh, these uh, numbers. And uh, there is also the old state, the new state, and, and, and the final, uh, final resolution of the, of, the, of the insertion of the, uh, the device. So this was watch. Now, uh, when I want to list, just list the devices, I, I need to, uh, or I can use the 
uh, list devices uh, command and uh, uh, list devices. Uh, if I list them, uh, each uh, device is uh, prefixed with uh, some index number. So when I want to add this uh, device to the database, I can just use that uh, number. In uh, my case, the data traveler is uh, index 15, so I can use command uh, allow device. In this case, uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, ID 15, and that's it. From now, as you can see, the device started to work and uh, it uh, that uh, it automatically uh, was uh, mounted and so on. Uh, the same uh, I can do with, uh, uh, with a block device or reject device. Uh, difference between block and reject is that uh, if you block the device, it's uh, set in kernel that is disabled or yeah, basically it's disabled, uh, but you can enable it again. If you reject it, uh, the kernel drops completely the reference to the device and you need to reinsert it to, to allow it again. Uh, there is command list rules, uh, which will list basically the file rules conf. Uh, you can use uh, append remove uh, for the rule. Uh, if, if you use, for example, a remove, those rules are again indexed and you can remove uh, some particular index. If you want to append, you can put here whole rule. Um, as the watch command uh, showed the line, allow something or block something, you can take whole, uh, whole uh, output and put it as a rule and it will add it to, to, the, uh, to the database. Uh, not, not big magic. Uh, the rules uh, themselves, I, I mentioned that already, uh, are uh, specified as, uh, as one line, uh, uh, which uh, starts with uh, allow or, uh, or, uh, or deny uh, keyword, and then there are those attributes for the device, uh, and um, uh, also uh, you can uh, use these uh, hashes. It, depends on, on your preference. Um, the attribute forms can be uh, different. You can have single valued or multi valued, uh, which means you can group those uh, rules together. Like for example, all the uh, flash drives uh, or uh, specific uh, brand flash, flash drives, for example. You can also use those um, stars here. Um, there are examples in the, in the man page of uh, USB guard rules con, so you can take a look and um, and go through that and, or search uh, on the internet. Uh, there can be conditional rules. Uh, for example, you want to enable. Uh, uh, USB devices only uh, during working hours. So you can put here some statement uh, that uh, basically these two lines, uh, if you use them as a rule uh, for the rule database, uh, this will uh, define that every uh, USB device is allowed during these hours, like starting uh, 9 a.m. Uh, and ending 6 p.m. And everything else will be blocked. So outside this time frame, it will be blocked. Uh, there might be also other conditions, like uh, uh, if the device provides more interfaces, you can, uh, you can uh, construct uh, conditions based on these. And uh, finally, a, a graphical user interface. Uh, it's, uh, as I said already, it's a Qt applet uh, provides you the uh, notifications, 
and you can also do some simple manipulation with the policy. It's, a, it's not, a, it's not a designed for some tweaking of the policies. Basically, uh, if you want to uh, enable or disable the device uh, on the workstation when you, uh, when you insert it, it will help you. So if I start uh, USB guard uh, applet QT, I will get uh, this little icon here. If I click on that, I will, uh, I will see uh, the current uh, rules. You can see that uh, there are devices which are allowed. All of them are allowed. Uh, I can um, uh, change the state of uh, the particular device. Uh, I can apply the change uh, uh, real time, or I can uh, check this checkbox for permanently uh, to, to make permanent change to the database, to the config file. There are some uh, other options in settings uh, regarding the applet. Uh, if you uh, insert the device, there is uh, some timeout, for example, you can change these numbers. I will show you uh, if I uh, disconnect the USB uh, flash disk and insert it again. So it will uh, show me the, uh, the notification. And also there is a dialogue uh, asking me whether I want to allow or, reach, uh, or block the device and uh, whether I want to make this uh, change permanent or not. So I can, uh, I can allow it, for example, uh, right now. Uh, it will mount the, the flash disk. Uh, but if I disconnect it and connect it again, I will be again uh, asked. If I make it permanent, it will obviously uh, not ask me next time. Yeah? Uh, the notifications are there uh, each time, but uh, uh, the device is already enabled. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, uh, bigger screenshot of uh, these dialogues and, and, uh, and the notifications, and that's basically it. No rocket science. <laughs> it's a very simple uh, uh, concept. Uh, it uh, basically can work for a long time. It's uh, implemented in kernel, this enabling, disabling, it's implemented in kernel since uh, 2007, but uh, actually no one was interested <laughs> in that for a long time. And the uh, first commit of USB guard was done on, uh, uh, I guess, uh, March uh, 2015. So it's quite short time, but uh, at the same time, it's, uh, it's a long time enough to be widespread, it, but it's not uh, happening that often. Uh, this uh, this uh, USB card is uh, by default not installed in uh, the Linux distributions. I don't know whether there is any uh, which installs it by default, but uh, Fedora nor uh, Debian Ubuntu doesn't do that by default. So. Time for questions. Yeah. How do you use the applet in GNOME? Sorry? How do you use the applet in GNOME? It doesn't, it doesn't show up. In GNOME? Yeah. Uh, actually, I didn't try that. <laughs> I just tried. If you give it a PPC, PPC access and you insert the device, it will pop up the thing. You cannot get to the list of rules because there's no place to. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's. Uh, uh, I, I don't have an answer for this. Uh, I'm not, as, as you can see, I'm not using uh, GNOME uh, 3. I use Mate, which is fork of GNOME 2. And there is this, there is this uh, uh, system tray for, for the, these icons. So the, but the, the applet is working, yeah? The, the well, yeah. notification should be there. Just a notification will pop up. Yeah. I don't know where it is on the screen, that's it. You won't see it pop up, sorry. Just the, the allow, deny. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh, 
No, I, I don't have an answer for this right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, my colleague uh, notes that it's a problem in GNOME uh, notification system, not in the applet itself. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, that the security uh, yeah, re is relied heavily on serial numbers and uh, device name. Yes. But uh, what, what if uh, a malicious actor can uh, spoof uh, these attributes? Uh, oh. Which protection? Is there any other mechanism? Uh, if you can mimic the device uh, completely, there's no way to distinguish. But uh, uh, general general answer to this concern is to make the rules as much uh, uh, concrete uh, as much uh, 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 attributes to use in, in the in the rule as possible. It's uh, yeah. The, if if you have a device like the, the common device, you cannot distinguish in in this in this. Uh, uh, yeah. So we run out of time. So thank you for the attention.